And we're back for the finale of our series featuring the Ryan Resilience Lab. If you missed parts one and two, definitely hit the links to go back and check them out. But for now, let's get into part three. Alrighty, so the last thing I want to show you in the learning part is our sheds. So when you live in a floodplain, mm -hmm. you still need to store things, right, right? right? And so again, we're just modeling two different ways of how we can do that. So the first shed here is just raised, right? Like mm -hmm. we talked about, like buildings raised too. The second shed, oh, do you see what's going on with like it? It's like the dock up front. Yeah, it's on floaties. Cool. So that shed will just float when this area floods. Because what sorts of things might you store in a shed? Lawnmower, kayaks, yeah. anything technically, right? Anything, yeah. And you don't want your stuff getting flooded out. Right. Right? I do not want <laughs> my general. personal, in general, I do not want my things getting muddy and flooded yeah. and destroyed. Right. A lot of people also store gasoline, right? You've got oh. gasoline in your lawnmower. You might have extra pesticides, fertilizers, mm. paint, thinner, yeah. chemical components that we also don't want to leach out into the river. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's that's the big one. But yeah. then of course you also don't want your stuff destroyed, right? right? So again, that's why it's super important to mm -hmm. make sure that all of our areas are resilient, yeah. right? We're ready. On our way to the green roof. Let's do it. I'd like to build a house that looks like this. Right. You know, this is beautiful. That's kind of okay. Cool. So up yeah. here we've got our green roof. Green roof? Yeah. And just like the green wall, it is insulating the building. You're putting vegetation back on the building mm -hmm. so that it doesn't get so hot and you save money and we're not burning as many fossil fuels. Now, green roofs come in all different shapes and sizes. Okay. This green roof is only four inches deep. Okay. It's basically gravel and then it's planted with sedum. Sedum is a type of succulent, mm -hmm. so it's happy in nutrient poor soils yeah. and happy to be baked all day in the all sun. Day. The architect that built this building told us that the average roof can bear the weight of a small green roof like this. Like okay. You don't need a specially designed yeah. roof for it. Okay. Um, of course, you want to consult with your local roofer to make sure of that course. your roof right, is like <laughs> stable and good. Don't just get up going without any research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, be smart about it. And, and it's pretty to look at. It is pretty to look at. I mean, you know, as you look out across buildings in yeah. general, right, and across a city, it would look so much better if yeah. there was greenery to look back on. And yeah. what's really important is that it reduces the heat island effect. That's the sense that uh, cities and towns are notably, measurably hotter than the surrounding countryside, right? The weather's no different 10 minutes away, yeah. um, but it can be much cooler in the forest than it is in the city. And right. that's because you've got all this asphalt and concrete and buildings that are holding onto heat. Yeah. So when we put vegetation back on buildings, not only are you reducing the temperature for your building, you're lowering the temperature for the whole community. So that's, you're actually doing your neighbors a solid. That is a big deal. Yeah. That's a big deal. Because we're all sweating out here. <laughs> we're all in it together. Yeah. We're all in this together. That's true. Uh, I can tell you about the Akoya side paneling. This here, right? Yeah, yeah. So the entire building is covered in this side paneling. It's called Akoya, A-C-C-O-Y-A. Akoya. Akoya. And so it's a type of pine that has been through a pickling process, okay. if you will. Yeah. Um, it's a patented pickling process, and it's essentially pickled to the point where it really can't absorb moisture. Okay. So it doesn't need any sealants. Oh. And sealants, no matter how carefully you apply them, will also it's eventually well. leach out into the river. So what's super cool about it, though, is that it lasts at least 50 years. So it just, it lasts a really long time. You know, your roof, you're going to replace that every 20 years or so. But this, yeah. you're going to replace that once in your yeah. lifetime. So, yes, it is more expensive than your typical side paneling, but, but it's an investment. Yeah, yeah, in the long run, it's an investment. And um, so, yeah, the Akoya paneling, all the wood made to build the Ryan Resilience Lab is FSC certified. That's okay. Forest Stewardship Council certification. And that is a really good logo to look for when yeah. you're buying any sort of paper or wood product. Look hey, for. What does it stand for again? Forest Stewardship Council. Yep. It's okay. just a green certification for wood and paper products. That's so. good to know. Wow. And you mentioned you guys have solar panels? We do have solar panels. If we back it up a little bit. Yeah. So we have two slanted roofs here at the Ryan Resilience side. You can see this one here yeah. and then it's flat and straight and then it slants down again on this side. Yeah. So on our two slanted roofs, we've got solar panels and those solar panels produce all of the energy that we need here in the building. So all of it. Mm -hmm. That's wild. On average over the course of a year. So our goal is to be net zero. Yeah. So over the course of a year, 
we will consume only the amount of electricity that these solar panels Yo, provide. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, that's net huge. zero. And we do that by being so insulated. The building is incredibly insulated. It's got two to three times the insulation of most typical buildings. It's also, all of the windows are triple paned and argon filled. So having good windows, yeah. like sustainable windows, that saves you a lot of energy as yeah. well. So, Speaking of windows, yeah. what are these dots on the window? So the dots, can ask folks back home, uh, who here has ever seen a bird fly into a window? One billion birds die every single year a, from flying into building a windows. A billion a birds? A billion, with a B. Just yes. from flying into the windows? Yes, that is Whoa. the estimate. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And so it's a problem. Wow. And a very simple thing that we can do is just put dots on the outside of the windows. If you put them on the inside of the windows, they're just nice human dots. Putting these things on the outside of the windows allows the birds to see the windows so they don't accidentally fly into them. And it doesn't impede your ability to see outside at all. It's a very simple thing that we can do. And it's just a film that goes on the outside of the window. So again, you're not buying. It's Individual not Individual dots? No, no. Yeah, they're not. Thank God. Yeah. And they're... <laughs> When we first moved into the building, the dots were not here. Yeah. And so when it came, it was like this giant, giant thing of like picture like saran wrap, right? Yeah. Like a big old roll. Right. And then they just, yeah, they cleaned the windows and they just rolled it onto the window. So again, you don't need to buy special windows or anything, yeah. um, although it's good to have energy efficient windows. Um, but for the bird dots, yeah, you just roll that stuff on. But wow. help your birds see your windows. No, dude, seriously. <laughs> Especially here in Virginia. We're part of that migratory pathway yeah. Um, yeah. of birds flying up and down the East Coast. Yep. So yep. Um, it's really good to be bird friendly. And for us, it was really important because we've done all this work to put habitat back, right? We've right. put the shoreline back. So we're they're going to come back regardless. Exactly. Yeah. We're literally inviting birds and wildlife back yeah. to this space. We wanted to make sure the building was yeah. not a death trap for yeah. them. Yeah. So. <laughs> Great job, guys. Thank you. Great thank job. you. We try. We try. <laughs> Dude, I've learned so much. If you have not been here yet, I highly recommend you guys come check this space out. There's so much to see. There's so much to do. You got something else to add? No, I just want to say thank you for coming yeah. and bringing your audience here with us. We would love to see you here at the Ryan Resilience Lab. Love to take you on a tour through. We also have loads of mostly free programming. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're just looking to engage everybody. Come by and say hi. We'd love to see you. One more thing. Where can people find information about the program? I am so glad you asked that. You can go to elizabethriver.org. Okay. You can find all of our programming there, as well as our folks at Paradise Creek Nature Park. Yep. That's also Elizabeth River Project. So, yeah, that's what folks can know. Awesome. Thank you so much, Victoria. I appreciate you. it. I really appreciate you. Absolutely.